Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to Six Days. I am Bob Six, and today, hey, what the hell is that shit? And today, I'm doing something a little different. People have been asking me to react to things other than music. People want to see some more of my comedy. So I figured today I would react to me and my comedy. I'm going to do a countdown of the top five jokes that I wrote and I enjoyed performing the most on stage. The asterisk in this is number five, which is our starting point. I've never told on stage. I wrote this joke after I stopped performing. Uh, I still write. I still make people laugh. I just, as far as pursuing comedy, it, the God's honest truth is I just felt it in my gut. It was time to stop and move on to something different. And I focus all my time on this. So that's the truth. But here's the joke I wrote, and it's why I explain to people, especially the people who followed me for a little over six years that I was performing stand up, when they would ask, Why did you quit? And I'd always go, I'm going to be honest. I wanted to pursue acting. And my manager told me the only way I could succeed as an actor is to focus 100% of my attention on acting. So I had to let comedy go. So I had to start off rock bottom. I store, starred in a lot of low budget porns. And I mean low budget. By low budget, I mean they were shot on an iPhone. By starred, I mean it was, it was just me. That's why I was the star. That's the reason I give. I don't know if you find it funny, but I found it funny. Number four is location. This is the joke. It's a three-part joke. Uh, I set it up, and it has callbacks. The third callback, or the second callback, the third part of the joke, I literally wrote the day before I performed it, so I had no time to work on it at open mics, trim any fat off, work it out. So this is the rough first time on stage in a comedy competition at that to put the pressure on that I told the joke. So it's a little rough, but you'll get the idea. So this one is, this is my number four. You know, when I was growing up, my parents always told me, life is how you look at it. But as I've gotten older, I've realized it's less how you look at it, more where it happens. Let me give you an example. If I was to stand here and go, hey, this is how I hula hoop. It's silly, but it's not weird. But if I walked up behind you at the urinal and said, hey, this is how I hula hoop. This shit gets weird, right? I'll give you another example. If your doctor says, hey, I need to check your prostate. It sucks, but it's not weird. But if your doctor walked up behind you at the urinal and said, hey, I need to check your prostate. If you'll step into the handy stall, we can take care of that right now. Shit gets kind of weird, right? I recently turned 50 and everybody keeps telling me I need to have my prostate checked and I've never had it checked and I'm now plan on it because I've heard that sometimes while getting it checked you get a boner and sometimes you come. The reason the audience is quiet is as wild as everybody thinks Austin is, it is not. Austin is a big popularity contest. I did these competitions to, even though you're in front of some upper crust people who can make your career, they're still in that little clique. The popular kids get all the laughs with the limp dick jokes. I mean, they are not funny at all. One of them, you can actually find him on America's Got Talent bombing, and he killed with that exact same bit here in Austin. I'm not hating, I'm just saying they're, they're real clicky. The Austin comedy scene was not what a lot of people make it seem like. Well. Unless you're upper crust comedy or in the in crowd. I just think that sends the wrong message to the doctor. <laughs> it kind of makes it look like you're enjoying it way more than you should. But that could be one of those location things. If you get a boner and come in his office while he's fingering your butt, it's okay. But if it happens in the handy stall, that shit's kind of weird. <laughs> okay, here comes the joke that I literally wrote the day before. So it's gonna be kind of rough, but I like it enough. And I told it many times after this, got it smoothed out and it always killed. 
<laughs> my brother called me today and said he ran into a, my girlfriend from Germany. I haven't seen her in 36 years to the day, which made it kind of ironic they ran into her. And I remember when she left, we agreed to say our goodbyes the day before because the day of was just too traumatic. So the day she left, I came home and my brother said, hey, Lisa stopped by and left something for you in your room. She always left little notes and poems and pictures, shit like that. So I went and looked under my pillow. There was the hottest pair of little pink panties I'd ever seen in my life. And I was like, holy shit, she really does love me. So I, I kept them under my pillow to help me remember her every night before I went to sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like how she got it really quick, what I was talking about. Well, I'd had them about a week. My mom was doing laundry, and she'd come out holding up Lisa's panties with this really disgusted look on her face. And she said, why are these under your pillow? I said, oh, um, Lisa left those for me to remember her by. And she got an even more disgusted look. And she said, these are mine, you fucking little pervert. <laughs> Turns out my brother had found them in the dirty clothes and put them under my pillow. <laughs> hey, you know, now that I think about it, that could be one of those location things. <laughs> my mom finding her panties under my pillow in Bamberg, Germany, meant that I was a fucking little pervert. But if we had been in Arkansas, it would have meant that I'm sweet and I love my mama. It stuns me how many people ask me if that story's true. No, it's not true. If it was true, I would take that shit to my grave. I would never tell anyone that. That just blows my mind. Out of all the weird shit I've said on stage, people always come at me and go, is that true? Oh, my God. All right. So, this one, my best friend passed away last year, but this joke was written about him. And it's weird how many people would come up to me after a show and go, you shouldn't tell that joke. Why? Well, because it's offensive. Wait, the person that the joke's about thinks it's hilarious. His mom thinks it's hilarious. So the two people that should, if anybody's going to be offended, isn't offended. But, so, in memory of my friend Jeff, here's, I'm not gay. <laughs> you know, I guess it's jokes like that, but a lot of people ask me if I'm gay. I'm not. And I know that because I've thought about it. Wait, not thought about it. Thought about is there any possibility, and I know that there's not. I don't find anything sexually attractive about men. I cry when the doctor sticks his finger in my ass, so I could never imagine having a dick in it. And growing up, my best friend was gay. We're still friends to this day. I didn't know he was gay for the first couple of years. I just thought he kept blowing me because my girlfriend wouldn't do it. So as you can see, he set the best friend bar pretty fucking high. <laughs> Jeff was, it was never an issue with us. You know, back in the 80s, it was not cool to be gay, but the subject never came up. I knew he was. I found out later in life that at the time he didn't know. He just knew he was different than everybody else. But was never an issue. Uh, my best friend, he accepted me for wh who and what I am. And I accepted for him for who and what he was. So when you hear all those stories about people going, oh, some gay guy came on me. Well, that means you were acting gay, dumbass. They don't want anything to do with straight dudes. Just a little tip. All right. This joke I literally wrote while at work. Uh, most of my jokes, I, don't, I do some fat trimming, but they come to me, and what you hear is usually pretty close exactly to how it came to me. I very rarely have to develop a joke. Like I said, sometimes I'll, I'll trim a little fat off or take some details out, you know, that kind of shit. But for the most part, when they come to me, it's, it's literally like a memory, so I don't have to do much about it. So this joke, I laughed way hard at it. And I think at this point, I'd been telling it for a couple of years. So this one's called 
the sleepover. Hey, have you ever stopped to wonder just how many times your mom kissed you right after she finished blowing your dad? You're welcome. I was lucky growing up. I never saw my parents getting busy. I did see my friend's parents getting down one time when I spent the night. I was mesmerized. I couldn't stop watching. Believe it or not, it wasn't even awkward. Well, not at first. It got a little awkward when they realized I was at the foot of their bed masturbating. It got a little more awkward when I found out the only reason they noticed I was there is I accidentally came on his dad's foot. They said I wasn't allowed to spend the night anymore. I tried to reason with his dad. I was like, come on, dude. You remember what it's like to be 21 and horny? Okay. This joke, the reason, reason I made it number one is because I used to do it. I stopped doing it. And then other comics, when they would see my set or they would come to a show that I was at, they would ask me if I was going to do this joke because they love the joke. It's their favorite joke that I do. So I had added it back into my set. When I originally did it, I performed it in front of the headliner, and her name is Thea Vidal, huge comedian. She's great. But when I came off stage, she stopped me and asked me if the story was true, which is a ginormous compliment for me. And I told her that the only two parts that are true is we have a dog and we have a neighbor. And she told me that shit was fucking hilarious. I love that. So here is Mr. Bojangles. I'm going to share something with y'all. We had the weirdest thing happen today. But i got to tell you the back story because it actually started three days ago. Me and my wife come home from shopping. And our dog has our next door neighbor's pet rabbit who's now very dead in his mouth. That's kind of what I thought, because I knew he was going to fucking blame me for that shit. So I get the dog, they ran away from the dog, and I take him to the kitchen, I put him in the sink, and I'm like, oh shit. How am I going to get out of this? So to calm my nerves, I did a shot of tequila. And then another. And another. And another. And after 17 shots, the clouds parted, and the answer was right there. So I super glued the puncture wound shut. I bathed the rabbit. I blow dried it. About midnight, I snuck back over there. Did you catch that error? See, not everything's perfect. I've told that joke hundreds of times. But instead of saying I snuck over there, I said I snuck back over there. A lot of people don't catch that, but me being my biggest critic, I promise you, I saw that and it just, just ate me up. Still bothers me to this day. Put it in a cage. Because I figured they'd wake up the next day and think, oh, he died of natural causes. No harm, no foul. So I heard nothing, and tonight when me and my wife were getting ready to come to the show, my neighbor called me and goes, hey, Six, can I talk to you for a minute? Sure. I'm kind of in a hurry. He said, I'll make it quick. Have you seen anything weird going on in the neighborhood? I said, weird? Like what? He goes, well, Mr. Bojangles, our pet rabbit, he died. He said, that's not weird, Carl. Pets die all the time. And he looked at me kind of weird. He said, I know that's not weird, Bob. But what is weird is he died on Sunday. Somebody dug him up and put him back in the cage. And I don't know if you saw my ass pucker. I said, all I could think to say was that shit is weird. And then we have it, my top five favorite jokes. And for the record, for those of you that saw my Thanksgiving bit that I posted, that is actually my number one favorite all-time joke that I wrote because the reactions I get from all age groups. But since I literally just showed that and the video is already out there for you to look, I did not include it in this list. Everything is actually shifted by one. That's my number one joke. And then this is six through two. But there you go. If you're still here, thank you for watching. I appreciate all the positivity I get from most of you. You are amazing people. And the fact that you want to know shit about me, you come back time and time again to see what I'm doing. 
you want to see other stuff than just music reactions, so that means you're interested in what I think about other shit. Man, that, that is the most amazing thing. Thank you so much. So I hope you have a great day. Make someone laugh if you get a chance. That's the greatest thing in the world to make people laugh. The reason I always say that is you may not know this, but there is actually science involved. When you make someone laugh, they cannot think about any other thing. Which means for a few seconds, you can make someone forget about all of their problems. That's why a lot of times when people tell you a joke, you'll laugh. Oh, it's the fucking funniest thing ever. But you can't remember the joke. You literally can't think of anything else while you're laughing. So you're, you're doing someone a, a great, great deed by making them laugh. Don't forget to tell your friends and family each time, every time you leave that you love them because you just never know when that's going to be the last chance you get to tell them. Stay safe, people. We are living in some crazy ass times. I am Bob Six. Peace.